from Black Wall Street. But key things here is, one is to awaken the minds of Africans to realize how robust we are and how vibrant we are if we choose to listen to the real war, the first African economic war. And this is laid by none other than the chairman, Charles L. Lambert, who is here to challenges to the far ends and to the unknown. It's an honor to have you, Chairman, this uh, evening, if I should call it. My pleasure, Andrew. Um, a couple of things have been happening. Um, these entire episodes have been shooting. When thing got my attention, I was reading a couple of comments that were coming from all over the world, but River State took my attention, and I want to thank everyone who has been following, especially from the River State. Um, one person asked that why has it taken you so long to come forth and you and 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 and, and you drum for this is this the so-called messiah of the african redemption mm -hmm. this was a question that came from the river state chairman why now why are you coming up in the 21st century and there seems to be a lot of reawakening mm -hmm. all over africa yeah it's fantastic i've actually I've enjoyed seeing the response of the African people. Mm. Um, uh, it shows that we are ready. <laughs> I'm ready, they're ready, everybody seems to be ready. And that's why uh, we coined that, that we are ready for this. Mm. We, it's our time, it's, uh, it's Africa's time. You mm. know? It's been a lot of uh, insults, a lot of disrespect to our people. Yeah. Our, everywhere we travel in the world, they look down upon us. People die on the road trying to get to some European country. I mean, people go to Middle East to become mm. slaves. Ha! <laughs> Africa! <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's no, enough. It's enough. Yeah. Enough is enough. Mm, yeah. Well, one, one, one of the key attributes you've always sounded for is about the capital flight that keeps going. That is over $5 billion and... We only have 2% of that as Africans. Key thing here is, how do we get involved? What is um, someone watching us from around the globe, especially the one who is an African, how do we get involved in this economic struggle? Because you could have chosen a gun war or a bush war, um, but you chose the economic war. But it doesn't mean the economic war might not get to the bush war. You know? <laughs> That's it the trajectory I want to get Yeah, into. we really wouldn't like it to get to the bush war, but mm. uh, I've hardly seen any serious economic war that doesn't end up at some point people discussing arms. And so you need to be very prepared for oh, this yes. kind of conversation. Mm. Um, but yeah, so we're ready. Any kind of war that is going to lead to, we're ready for it. Mm. But your question will be what? Because I was more cut off with the fact My that you said... My question is mm, about the mindset. Of the Africans. Of the Africans. What, do you, what, do you mean, what mindset do, do, should they have? Right now, where do you put their mindset vis-a-vis -vis what we need to achieve over time in the next five, ten years? Right now, these people are shocked. Africans don't believe what they're hearing. Mm. And the more they don't believe what they're hearing, the more I'm like, really? You didn't know that? <laughs> you didn't know that the political independence is an enemy to economic independence? Oh, that yes. is all a ploy mm -hmm. to, to, to divide us and conquer us and we become some European puppets forever? Oh, yeah. These are all the games. People are shocked when I say that. Mm. This is pretty obvious. Do you attribute that to the education structures we have as an African? Yeah, everything is from them, my friend. <laughs> we just copy and paste. Mm -hmm. They set up something here, they left, and we've never revisited what they set up. You know, in my family, maybe my father comes up with a rule. We don't want dogs. But I got married, my wife likes dogs, and I'm like, okay, my father doesn't like dogs, my wife likes dogs, <laughs> but, you know, you change, you adapt, you learn something different. Oh, yeah. We can't continue with what they gave. They gave for their benefit. Mm. They give the independence for their benefit. They divided the country for their Everything was done for their benefit. So we cannot continue doing the same thing that was designed to benefit the people. Well, if I could allude to uh, one of your key uh, statements, on quote, uh, you said the education structure was meant for us not to think, but to cram. And current times and the dispensation are calling for one to be creative and innovative. Oh, yeah, definitely. So how do we break the greed? <sighs> tough. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, that's why the Black Wall Street, 99% of us, no matter what product we bring, the most mm. important product we're bringing to Africa is content. Yeah. People's mind. You see, man, what is it? Not Mandela. Uh, Bob Marley. Yes. Emancipate yourself from mental, from mental slavery. Mm. I mean, his first rule to the breakthrough is change the mind. Then he says, none but ourselves shall free our mind. That's a real prophet. Yeah. That's a real prophet. Not these ones hanging around now. <laughs> now collecting money from people. Yeah. That's a real prophet. Emancipate yourself from mental slavery. None but ourselves. Not European Union. Ourselves shall mm. free 
our minds. And then we'll be in position Bam, to execute. over. So it's a hard job. I see your question is, is a lot of teaching, but we have strategies. We have seminars coming, we have quizzes. Mm. We have everyone who's coming on the platform. They have to learn. They have mm. to go through the shows. Mm. We're going to force the education into the minds of the people. Yeah. Chairman, when, when, when you speak about that, and those ones joining this conversation online, we are so gratified to have you here. We're having a conversation with the chairman at the BWA uh, South, that is the Black Wall Street. And it's entirely about the economic wall that is underway, but it starts from where you are. You plug into these programs and then you sell best to get there. Chairman, your emphasis seems to be more about the youth today, the women today, getting so much involved and inculcated in this entire program. But that notwithstanding, you've looked at the young generation. Have you ever taken time, Chairman, to look at the cartoons our children watch on the on the channels they have? I won't mention them because they didn't pay anyway. Yeah, yeah. Do you take time to look at this content that runs? I mean, I've had. I mean, let's make this a little bit more public. I've had personal chats with you, and yeah. you have brought this kind of thing as well. Yes, and yeah. that's what bringing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> the truth of the matter is that the most important thing for me is your real. What, what is our original content message? Our original content message is that we have to be careful what yeah. what what we're eating what we're feeding yep. so if you think the cartoon is a problem we also have to look into that oh, yeah. but i haven't really paid too much attention to what these kids are watching but you can tell us for like 30 seconds well um this is what i've noticed i've i've, I've seen personally my son doesn't watch um cartoons anymore and um this is not something because i saw it somewhere but it's because of the first facilitation program I went through um, and this really informed my pan-Africanism and it informed me why I had to look online and find a guy called Kunta who was African stories tailored for our culture wow. and showing us how robust we are if we choose to go back to the roots because civilization we have started to. from here we have to. and it spread to the race yeah. but it's it's really upset that now it's them selling them the back, back to us, us. Mm. so I've chosen what my son watches and I've chosen what my house watches as long as it's amplifying what we as Africans. So I'm looking at now me and one individual who took the time to go around and look for the content that can possibly be valid for my mm. children. Mm. Where is Black Wall Street looking at this kind of content? And if we get it, how are our kids going to be in position to plug into those That's quite channels? easy. You know we have the kids tablet, the child support yes. program. So mm. yes, when we have those kinds of initiatives, mm. it's very easy for us to adapt that. So yeah. I'll be more than, I think I've mentioned that to you before. I'll be more than happy for us to link up with these people that provide yeah. very transformative, original African content. Mm. It is very silly that our content is disrespected. Like you said, it is the foundation of yeah. humanity is Africa. Mm. Everything they know in Europe, they learned from here. Everything Asia has now taken, and the origin was from here. Mm. So any kind of development we want to see, any kind of rising as a people, you're 100% correct. We have to go back to our own content, mm. create our cartoons from our own stories, yeah. and remind our people who we are. Like right now, we're talking about the uh, Ubuntu spirit, yeah. which we really want everybody to adopt. The spirit of oneness, the spirit yeah. that, you know, all of us, that's how we are as Africans, mm. not this mm. thing they come and brought here. Do you think... Um, Part of the key fundamentals that is sabotaging and blocking the Ubuntu we are, we are um, you know, advocating for, it could be the lack of information in one or the other. Yes, absolutely. And the fact that for, for how many years we believe everything that white people brought is right. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the, big, the biggest problem is to understand that everything they brought was brought for their benefit. Okay. That's it. If you just know that everything they brought, mm -hmm. like look at the name Nigeria. It's a, it's a crazy name. It came from somebody referring to the area as nigger area. Mm. You call a bunch of niggers. They're just niggers. A lot of niggers are there. So that's nigger area. That's the name of the country. Yeah. And they continue answering the name till today. <laughs> in that context. Um, now, those are the Europeans and the Portuguese in context. Now, let's talk about China. It seems to have a more robust framework when it's approaching Africa. How ready are the Africans? I'm not, I'm not. See, people always try to bring up China. I'm not worried about China. Mm. And when people hear me talk about uh, Europe, 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 they say, this guy is not tuning in. The, the problem is not Europe. They're gone. The problem is China. You're wrong, my friend. You have to start from the ancient landmark. Okay. Because what the Chinese are coming to take advantage of is still that same ancient landmark that was divided by Europeans. Petitions. Yes. The fact that one little Zimbabwe can fight China. Mm. Can you imagine? 
Zimbabwe has 14 million people. China has one point something billion people. But they fight. But Zimbabwe has to be dealing with China as a country versus country. Russia it doesn't make. That's sense. already set for defeat. Mm. Zimbabwe is already screwed trying to fight China. Mm. 14 million, 1 billion people. So Zimbabwe should never have been a country. Zimbabwe shouldn't be a country. Mm. Africa should face China. As a block. Yes, that's the only way. Wow. Let's talk about the leadership in the African context. Do you see our leaders having and pursuing these or are our leaders it now... depends on who you call your leaders. You see, a lot of puppets. What do you mean by your leader? You mean your political your leadership, different categories. What? You mean political leadership or what kind of leadership? Political leadership. But in this context, I'm going to excuse the President Museveni for now and I'll come to him a little later. And the same applies to Gabriel Mugabe. I'll come a bit later on that. But the other leaders in Africa, when you look at them, uh, the other day they had, a, they had a symposium to discuss about Africa and how best we're going to get back uh, to the global scale of business. This meeting was held in Europe, discussing about Africa in Europe. Man, this, is not, this is not the first time. We, we see, <laughs> the, I mean, this is a, this, this, we see the, all the time, every mm. approach is ridiculous. Yeah. Every approach is ridiculous. That's it. Every, I didn't say some approach. Mm. Every approach. That's why I said these people are the wrong representation. Mm. You know the question I'm saying? Are they good enough? Are they not good enough? We, the leaders we have, what kind of leaders? We have wrong, like all the people representing us, take the back seat. Back. Go behind. That's it. Because you, we, we just have the wrong. It's not the question, how do we do to improve our leaders? What kind the people representing us should not be in the front. They should be at the back of the church. Why? Oh my God. Yeah. We have 2% less than access to global trade. Mm. The money going around the world. Yeah. The people representing us are only able to lead us to get less than 2% every year. So imagine your child every year costs 2%. Are you... <laughs> you say that's continue. painful. How do we improve you? No, yeah. it's everybody back seats immediately. What does it cost us to put them at the back seat, and who do we put at the forefront of the fight? Ah, uh, people who put at the forefront are all over. Mm. Smart, innovative minds, <laughs> business people, mm. manufacturers. People that can create stuff, people that can build stuff, people that can set up factories and employ people. There are too many people we can put in the front. We have the wrong people in the front. We have politicians, we have pastors in the front. These are people we have in the front. What nonsense? Chase those people behind. Your approach says that um, with regards to the education, the GDP approach on court, you say that it could be the best education model for Africa if well executed or implemented oh yeah it's the only it's not the now be. I'll, 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 I'll pick out the word if mm. well implemented explain more about that particular system and if well implemented what could be the return on investment in that ah the gdp you see we have three pillars mm -hmm. to how we want to see the new africa develop the mm. new one nation that is strong and is a superpower mm. number one and the most important is a government one government for the whole of Africa, but it's focused on security. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, I'll just tell people this. The reason Africa has never been invaded before is because Africa has never said, don't take from here. Never. Congo is a clear... Africa has never said that. Mm. Everybody says, don't take. Look at Donald Trump. Hey, we don't want you to come to our country. Go away. Visa, this, this one. This is yeah, Europe says, hey, don't come here. We have never said, don't take. Are you? Don't take. Who are you? Why are you here? What company from where? Get out. Don't come here. Why are you doing mm. this? Don't, no, we have never said that. And now we're saying it. Mm. And if we're saying it, <laughs> uh, people will say, wow, who are you to say? They'll bring some gorilla people. They'll start to cause trouble here. Mm. Uh, so security is the number one. Okay. The number two is an economic system that is focused on data. Trap and invest, watching what we're doing. Then you go to your third question, which mm. is the GDP-focused educational system. Perfect. That is a do or die. Because even if the security is wonderful, the economy plans are good, and the people who are running it are a waste of time, it's all a collapse. Yeah. So we are implementing that in so many ways. The ITE program, which I think you have an idea of, we'll roll out the app any minute from now. That begins the revolution, mm. the ITE. Because what we're doing with the students is the app interacts with the student directly. 
Yeah. Loans. Do you have money? Do you need student loan? We start to understand how the student and money relates. Right now, there's no relationship between student and money. Yeah. The different, the only relationship they have is the girls who go and sleep with some men and get some cash when they're in school and they're strapped, yeah. or the guys who just hang around and look for some godfather to give them. The students don't have relationship with money. Mm. So we need to start relationship with money for students at a very young age. Then they start thinking, what about studying money? They start on the, once they start understanding money from a very young time, then you see that the education and the GDP thing will start to work hand in hand. Okay. Well, that is, uh, that is a detailed plan. There. <laughs> uh, those are some of the key pillars. I'll, I'll, I'll get to a few questions. You can drop the questions on, on the page, you know, sample a couple of those. Chairman, you've explained that. Now, let me bring back the two leaders. Museven, why does he stand out with regards to the entire approach? Because in all the economic struggle you are looking at and you're explaining, if I could allude to what the president has been doing in the last years, he started development, redeveloping Uganda from 2006 to 2016. And um, this is part of, he was fighting a war uh, before. Now, first of all, I don't but, know if you want me to help you, you want me to, you want to help me? No, I, 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 about Museveni. I, 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 I want you to, to, I want you to look at Museveni from the economic perspective mm. and why he stands out from the other leaders around Africa. Um, one is, first of all, it's difficult for me to look at Museveni from, uh, from an economic perspective, because that's not his job. Oh yeah. Um, he has only done straight try to do that job because he you you failed him uh, mm. uh, so um, you by, failed by you failed him you mean I mean Ugandans okay. uh, the, okay. the, the, the people here they, mm. you failed him woefully mm. and because he came with the understanding of really how this Africa should be built go and read the manifesto yes. go and read the ten point program the he wrote the, he wrote the ten point program immediately he came and said hey listen this is a fundamental change mm. he said this is the blueprint for the fundamental change mm. and if you look at that blueprint he says private sector drives economy yeah. i make sure you're okay it was Security. a vow i will protect you i will give you the environment you have peace and he knew that was the only model that works private he sector. knew it's not about governments trying to build the governments don't build the economy my friend private sector does. but ugandans disappointed him mm. then ugandans never rose up to do the work never rose up to build the economy they said, okay, you, you are the Messiah. You have brought security. You also, you should also bring uh, uh, the economy. I mean, that's not possible. Just like asking me to bring security. I can't. Yeah. Uh, you have to let people do what they're bloody hell good at. Imagine if Museveni's influence was in Nigeria. Mm. Oh, that's my only dream. Mm. Let's have Museveni's influence in Nigeria, where people are ready to work. Mm. People are very productive. People are ready to hustle. People are ready to do what they can. People are ready to start their business. Then you give them security. Mm. <sighs> <laughs> I see where it goes. So, he had a vision. He wrote it on the wall. The nation didn't run with it. They did not. Till today. When I bring it up even to the, to the MPs in Uganda, I say, have you read the 10 point program? They say, yeah, yeah, let's talk about something else. Can you, he's just joking. <laughs> what does your leader have to offer other than a plan? He wants him to give you a plan that could cut his hand off too. Mm. He gives you a plan. The Bible says, write the vision, make it plain, that they may run, mm. that they may run. Not you that also wrote. <laughs> now, Musevedi will write, Musevedi will plan, Musevedi will run, Musevedi will supervise, Musevedi will check, Musevedi will cross-check. Man, That's uh, Uganda. Uh, now, let's go a little back mm. to Rondasia, um, Zimbabwe. You seem to allude to the late uh, Gabriel Mugabe with his approach on the economy, with his approach with Pan-Africanism and getting involved, the inclusion. What can we learn from his approach with regards to the economic war we're fighting now? Ah, uh, no, no, no. Mugabe is a politician. Mugabe is a politician. Mm. Um, I don't love him. I respect him as a Pan-Africanist. I mm. believe in everything he stands for. Mm. But you cannot approach economy with legislation. When you approach the economy with too much legislation, it's easy for the imperialists to accuse you of something, sanction you and mess you up. It is the private sector that should have fought those farmers. Okay. The land issue? Yes. It's the private sector that should have been organized. If, if Black Wall Street was available at that point, Mugabe wouldn't have had this problem. Because it would have been, hey, leave him. Don't bring legislation. He had to bring legislations. When you start using legislations, then it looks like, ah, you're using your authority, which was given to you by Europe. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, to mess our people, Europeans who are here. You're not using the European authority to mess European people? Nah. Then they hit him very hard. But if he had come with private sector mm. and say, hey, private sector here, I don't know what really the situation is in Zimbabwe, mm. but if he had come with a plan, if it was private sector mm. that came up with a plan and were fighting the farmers, he would have been more successful and nobody would talk. 
So that's because it will be business versus business. This this is changing the conversation, Chairman. Um, it literally makes much more sense why now everything benefits for them. That said, do we know how much we have as Africans with regards to our wealth? That is with the, with the minerals we have and the information we have and the power no, we have. No, we're going, that's what I keep saying about the show. We don't have data. Yeah. So investment has to go into satellites. We have to control what's in our space. Mm. This will control what's in their space. Yeah. Now, now the satellite mountains like to control what's in our own space. No, mm. get your satellite away from here. We want to know what's happening in Africa. Mm. So answering your question, nobody knows. What we know is what they tell us. If they come from what bank, they say, "Hey, you people have this material, this resource now, and <laughs> it's in this quantity, and the price is this, and that's how it's going to happen." Eh? Okay, the government say, "Okay, uh, mm. thank you for coming. What bank? God bless you." They give them some tip, they go away. That's, that's it. Wow, that's painful. It hurts when you speak about it and you smile. It's painful because I'm African. Now that we have the war and it's up for arms, and each one of us needs to be a part of this war. From the family level unit to the national grid to the continental to the regional block, how do we engage in this war? I want you, Chairman, to speak to me from a perspective that Andrew, you're going to do this, your family is going to do this, your village needs to do this, and how do we plug into all the the, the structures of of the W uh, of the BWS to make sure that we galvanize the entire war? Okay. <sighs> It's a tough question, but the simple answer is the Black Wall Street platform. Mm. The Black Wall Street platform right now has about 19 rows. Mm. The platform will be available by the end of the month. Okay. You go on the platform, you, there are so many rows there. So you read all the rows, any role you're interested in, you just pick the role. Mm. If you want to be a facilitator, which is the role I'm, I'm really talking about right now, you jump on board with that. If, you, if you're a job seeker looking for a job, you can jump on board with that. If you're Anything. There's every. There's twenty different roles there. There's a lot you can do. If you're a business, you can jump on board. If you're not, somebody who wants to be trained in business, you, we have twenty different roles on the platform. Mm. Everybody in Africa can housewife. You can have a job with us. You can buy. You can invest. You can work. You can set up your business. There's nothing you cannot do on the Black Wall Street platform. As long as you have to do with money, come. Let's do it together. Let's talk about the facilitators. I saw a question that came in from Niger and one came in from Gambia asking how does one become a facilitator mm. for all these um, platforms that are happening yeah. from their own countries that they can be in position yeah. to platform. What is it? The facilitator thing, it has, um, you have two major people that facilitate. The money facilitators, they call the payment facilitators. Yes. And then we have people we call the... Um, Fulfillment facilitators. And okay. Andrew, this is the point I want you to sort of take a bit more seriously and follow through. Mm. Because um, what the Europeans have done, they've set some, what we call, or what I've called, imperialist plugs. Yeah. These imperialist plugs are people who are here to make sure that their agenda continues. Their agenda? Yes. I hear you. What is their agenda? The number one agenda is that Africa should not intertrade. That's number one. Yep. Africa, don't let those people, what? Intertrade. Why? Every resource is in Africa. Africa is completely economically sustainable. sustainable. True. But if you are stuck in Nigeria or stuck in Ghana or stuck in some little place, mm -hmm. then it looks like your country is not good enough. Mm -hmm. But if you can leverage Africa, then you see that oh, Africa is beautiful because it's big and it's self. So they say, don't let those people be able to leverage on the whole thing. Let them be tied to a small geographical space. That's the game. Mm. So they maintain all those Nigeria, Ghana, Tanzania. They didn't have to bother us. So you can't move one here. You can't do this. Here. Too many restrictions. Does that explain why Sadat can in, any, in no way go into the commissariate with regards to trade? <laughs> Now, mm. if you force that into trade by, we're going to set up this factory here, which is what we're doing now. We're building mm. 101 phone factories. Remember that phone factory story? Yeah. Oh, we've taken it to another level. All the pan African is going to have one. I'll send you the details when we're finished. Mm. Now, when you finish setting up all those phone factories, there's 101 of them, and you're supplying your moving trucks, you're going to see all the impediments. Oh, yeah. You start seeing all the problems. You start seeing, oh, no, this is Tanzanian border. You can't cross here. Yet we're in Africa. Mm. You come here, oh, here, you have to pay another duty. Oh, no, yet we're in Africa. Mm. Then you hear, you have to do this other thing. Yet we're in Africa. Mm. Ah, no, my brother, you can't do that. So that is why these facilitators come into the picture. So that we can force this into trade. Know who these enemies are, these imperial plugs, mm. and brush through them. 
Well, there you have it. It's a conversation that is still underway. I'm Andrew Chamagdan. We are live from the BWS house. You need to be a part of this conversation. It's the first African economic war. And we'll be back shortly. We'll take a break, but keep it here with us.
Hello again, welcome back to the Blackwall Street. Today we are having a conversation with Chairman Charles N. Lambert. I'm Andrew Chamagero and conversations seem to be coming from all walks of life. I want to tap a little bit from your feedback. First of all, I want to thank those who are part of this conversation. Please share these conversations to your friends and family and to your other platforms. I'll start with um, Gideon Tembo. Uh, you're saying that you're watching live from Uganda. Thank you so much. Then we have Munyarandiz Vambe. You're from Zimbabwe, my friend. I want to thank you for that. You learned about UPAP is the way to go and Africa is remaining poor because you're not in such platforms. Then now Ms. Tiwi, thank you so much. You're saying that Charles Lambert, you're a leader. I follow your leadership. Mm -hmm. That is a now me there. Then um, J. Pal, um, um, hello Africa, watching from Uyo, Akwa Ibom State. Thank you so much. Then we have uh, Linda is a, is a Wankwo, still watching from Nigeria. Peace Oranusi, I see you, Kevin Deche. Uh, we have Princess Kingsley Nyeche uh, from River State, Nigeria. I love River State for two reasons. One, they seem to be more, more, more critical about everything. And in the feedback I've been seeing a lot of them. No offense to the other states and the other countries watching us from wherever you're watching from. Then uh, going to Solomon Ebo saying that this is up uh, this is what we need updated data is needed in africa to enable us harness our economies um then uh, finally someone saying that he's watching in from kenya thank you so much milia lazu thank you so much um to be honest there are 160 chairs from the page you can imagine the magnitude of comments i have to go through but back to you chairman <clears throat> looking at the entire spell in the next 30 minutes let's look at um the inclusion one of the key apps you have of 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 of, of the black wall street is about the farmers farming seems to be one of the backbone of africa where people need to understand the commercialization of farming how do we integrate the farming and the innovation to see that it plugs into the economic world oh the the, the app uh, okay the m7 agriculture bank we have an app uh, mm -hmm. um called the m7 agriculture bank um, should be available sometime from around next month. Okay. Um, so we have the app show. It's a real thing. Religion does 28 apps is what this is all about. Mm. Um, so the 28 apps solves all the problems. Uh, so it comes with their innovations uh, mm. on, on the issue of farming. And you get to see it there. Mm. We'll go into it. In fact, that's what the next season is all about. Okay. The next season is now me going from theory uh, to this is the solution. This is the solution. Mm. So I'll pick an area, for instance, farming, and I'll bring out the app. Mm. And I'll explain the innovation behind the app. Mm. I'll explain the features of the app, the services it provides, the CEO that runs that, mostly mm. an African American, because mm. we're bringing the African Americans big time. Okay. Uh, they've been dying to come and build Africa, mm. uh, but no platform. <laughs> no, uh, the now platform. they have it. Yeah, now they have it. And they're going to come in their numbers. Mm. And we have, they're first coming here to Uganda. Wow. Uh, it's the only place in Africa that is safe for them. Mm. They have suffered too much. Mm. They, they don't deserve. Mm. to go into another African country mm. and they're not treated properly. So they have to come here mm. where I know that they'll be fine mm. because of President Museveni. Mm. Hold it up. Um, well, the chairman is very passionate about this when, when he speaks about any, any black person on the other side who is suffering and those ones who have seen every now and then being in the Mediterranean, <laughs> boats capsizing, and the other one standing into asylum seekers, yet they have a lot in Africa that needs to be, um, f uh, once, first of all, um, needs to be harnessed. Then secondly, beyond that is the leadership we need on this side. So the question then comes in, are they ready to come back to invest in Africa where they are believed into, where they are not dissed and they are not dropped on the streets because they are blacks? So creating an environment where they can possibly come back and we have this come through. It's something that makes the chairman go a little bit much more passionate there. Chairman, to allude more about that, how do we make people understand the modern slavery, that it's real? <sighs> the problem I've seen in the world now is that people don't want to understand anything except they are hearing about a solution. Mm. So nobody wants to, nobody cares because mm. they feel, I don't know, the generation that we have, mm. they hate pain. 
So they don't want to associate with pain. Mm. They pretend that it's not there. Mm. And some of their leaders, the UN people, oh, they yes. crafted another one called political correctness, mm. where you now don't tell people the truth, mm. where you now turn the world to a, a global lie of deception, where you tell people totally what is not just because you want the world to be in a certain way mm. so in such a world <laughs> you want to tell people about uh, slavery to understand it modern day they're not interested they, they want to see what is the result what is in it for me that's where we live now now talking about the let's go e-commerce every app we're looking at from the black wall street is e-best it's money that's not tangible, but it's money in your account and it's money. You can gun with the drone, you do all these transactions. Um, are we ready for that kind of takeoff or it's another phase of learning you're going to take us through as Africa mm. to understand that and we go to that scale? Okay, I think you're heading towards digital currency. Yes. We, we don't play around those things for now. Yeah. Uh, we don't. A lot of people are pushing us to get into digital crypto, but we deal with real money, money that is in people's pocket. The mm. apps are just two like i keep saying mm. there are four sides of the product of, of of business mm. number one is the physical product so even if it's your farm mm. or this thing we're drinking or whatever this cup is a mm. physical product mm. or the la whatever then you have the actual price of mm. the physical product mm -hmm. then you have the place which is where i'm going to exchange my money mm. for the product yeah. so the product the money, the money mm -hmm. and where I'm going to exchange it with you. Yeah. Then you have the final thing, the promotion that people are going to get to know about this product and this money. Mm. That place is just all the app is. Nice. Everything else is still very physical. The so, app is just where we exchange that money. That's all. Well, well many w people would have questions of um, when you look at the likes of uh, Kanu Mandi and when you look at um, that is in the BFR. And when you look at the likes of um, uh, Lucius These are political, Sly. you always talk about political because leaders. Because we have too many political leaders. Do, do, do you know where I come to that? Mm. Because these, according to your last season, you've made it categorically clear that they have been used as pawns to blackmailers. All the time. As Africans. All the time. So how do we break them off the and we focus on the on the wall that is economical the most important thing is to let africans stop drinking information from the west we collect a run date we know i mean the african perception mm. the african perception that harvard professor is more superior to macquarie university professor mm. is the problem here so with this platform, we stretch, when we release our platform properly, mm. we're going to make sure that Africa is watching only this. Mm. All our content is this. We have our shows, remember, we have four shows, mm. seven, seven days a week, 28 days. So Send we keep you busy. Mindset. We're keeping you busy. We're keeping you busy. You're watching a show on what are you watching mm. a show on, and you're seeing our celebrities, our version of the story. Mm. So when you see our version of the story, you're not going to listen to that version. We want 100 million Africans, 200, 300, 400 million Africans to see the perception from our reality. Mm. Not the reality of CNN or Fox News or whatever that comes from MSNBC. Mm. They, that's what they're sucking right now because we don't have alternative information. So we're giving alternative information. Yes, we're going to get the platform. Me, yeah. mm. That brings me to episode 22 where you say that uh, um, this entire platform is going to create over 600,000 jobs yeah absolutely break it right down now for, we're doing that it, now before break it down for us now we have broken the continent into 600 geographical locations mm -hmm. very important uh, because we have to see how we can get to the people because when they broke they broke both on resources mm. so for instance the country called Cameroon the name came from shrimp mm -hmm. you know so they said ah there's shrimp there that place came into shrimp is Cameroonian Cameroon is, a sh is, is the win of, uh, of what I think in Portugal. Yeah. Uh, so they refer to shrimp as Cameroon. So they just call the place Cameroon. So it was based on the campfire. That's just a place for mm. shrimp. Mm. So the whole of Africa is just a division of European conquest, of European desire for treasure. So this place is shrimp. This one is oil. Mm. This one. So that's bullshit. Mm. And that's why we have nepotism. We don't know how to develop. We don't know who to, where to start development from because we're still following the old boundary. Mm. So we need to start afresh. So we have divided Africa into 600 locations mm -hmm. based on where the population people are. And the wisdom to do this came from President Museveni himself. Mm. 
just talking about how he wanted Uganda to be set up and how he did 20 locations that would just mirror that communication and spread it to the whole of Africa. And it worked. Mm -hmm. And we were able to get the whole of Africa to 2 million people each. Wow. And through that 2 million people in one location, we can now check water access, housing, road. We can check. We have something called the economic system between eight apps, work with the economic system to check exactly water student loan health care where do you live do you own your own home what's your investment what's your retirement plan mm. we're getting to the people it's solid. then we can start giving them solutions through those apps mm. in all those areas and upgrading the whole thing until we have a people that live in a fantastic society well you and i watching this from wherever you're watching from it's now much more evident that uh, we don't need to refer to ourselves like i'm from anglophone i'm from anglophone mm. but we need to refer to ourselves as africans yes. so Sustainable fundamentals are going to be broken to build a great and sustainable economy as Africans. So you and I need to be a part of this. Chairman, as we're wrapping this up, a question came from um, some gentleman from Nigeria in the last comments we had. Yeah. This is going to face resistance from the pundits, the ones who post and ponder what the colonial masters are doing this. What strategies do you have in place? to keep the guard up, to keep the army motivated, to keep them moving, that to focus on the bigger court. I don't believe in resistance. Mm -hmm. We are the one resisting. I can't be resisting and you're telling me I'm going to face resistance. I'm already resisting. Mm -hmm. Africa is still under the control of Europeans and China. We, you know, I'm resisting. Mm -hmm. So if you stand in the way, I don't think you understand the man who is resisting. Stand in his <laughs> way. Uh, so the answer is uh, we're resisting. So if mm. you stand in our way, my brother, uh, it's too ugly. Mm. It's too ugly. Too ugly. Yeah. Ugly. When when you say it's too ugly, are you alluding to your first statement when we have just started the show, where you said it's an economical war, but if it requires this, yes, to go that's into why we're glad that President Museveni is held this strong and alive. Mm. Yeah, the lion, the real lion of Africa. Mm. Uh, the one who's capable of seeing the whole Africa mm. see it and say, nah, 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 he's still here. Yeah. Referring to the, uh, the first statement that came in from uh, Kwame Nkrumah in the African Union, the very first one, he said that the day we understand how strong we are as Africans and the potential we have with the wealth that is around us is the day we realize that we're the best continent. As you're wrapping up the show, um, Chairman, I want you to talk to the world and tell us that in our times. This was Nkwame Nkrumah in about uh, 50 years ago. Now you're back here with us in, 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 in the prophetic profoundness, if I can give, put it give, that give, way. Give me his words again. He said what? His words were, if we understand the potential we have as Africans and the world that is around us, then we will understand that we're the best continent God has ever created. Oh, yeah. Now, that was seen back in the day. Okay. Fast forward. I'll bring it here. Ah, you're joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm real. I'm okay, real. now. <laughs> yeah, listen. We are the only superpower. Mm. Ah. Is, we are the only... You know what only means? Uh, there's no anybody else who is the real superpower. We are the only superpower. Mm. We are Africa. Mm. All the resources here, we haven't even tapped into it. Human power, we can multiply like there's no tomorrow. We are the ones he told to subdue the earth, take over everything. We're the ones he told that. How we lost it, I don't know. But we're here, we're getting it back. Nothing has changed, yeah. Well, there you have it. That has been the conversation. I want to thank each one of you who has been a part of this. But please note, this brings us to the end of a conversation about the first episode of the 26 uh, episodes that have been going ahead and ahead on this platform and other platforms. More apps are coming. In season two of the next episodes coming through, you want to become a facilitator. You need to know how you're going to be a facilitator, how these apps are going to run. Please make sure you stay on this platform. More information will be given to you, but it's part of your job, part of this role, and part of your contribution is to share this link to your friends and family that they understand more of everything you've, you've learned. It's a job to pass it on to the others. My name is Andrew Chamaglu, but remember to press the like button. If you've not liked this page, like it, send it to your friends and family. And from me and the chairman and the entire team from the BWS, we want to thank you for your time, for spending time with your data to watch and understand. 
and get to be a part of this plug. Till next time, have a lovely time.